This episode of the Red Bull Ramp is by the fine patrons that support us through patreon.com slash Red Bull Ramp. You can support us for the low, low price of $1 a month, and you can get exclusive content, including a monthly wrap-up for the New York Red Bulls. We want to send a special shout-out to our patrons who support us at $5 a month. That is our producer-level reward. Thank you to Jeremiah Dempster, William Martin, Gwen Rochesco, Clayton John, Chris Adamek, and Maeve Dartinez. Now, on to the show. The Red Bull Rant is a free-flowing podcast with three soccer-loving idiots who don't know when to shut their dumb potty mouths. So listener discretion, yeah, it's, it's pretty much advised. Welcome, my friends. Show them friends. This is the Red Bull Ram Podcast. I'm your host, Jason I. Pico. I'm Pat McDonald. I'm Truman. Why are we even doing this anymore? But it's episode 372, <laughs> Chicago No Hope. Oh, boy. Yeah. No Hope is probably a good way to think of it. Uh, I, could be just, I could be watching the rest of this Field of Dreams game, but no, I have to do this. <laughs> Uh, could be it's enjoying something for once. Embarrassing! <laughs> By the way, that's a new soundboard app, and it's actually working. Huzzah! All right. Let's get into this. So Red Bulls lost 2-1 at Chicago. Not only losing the game, but blowing three points for Truman and myself because I had a score towards the end of the game. Let the last <laughs> minute. <laughs> Literally, right as I sent to you, at least we'll get three points. He fucking scores the first time in God knows how long. Well, he had to make up for the goal he saved, so. Which, I mean, you know, he should be moved to the back line. All right, so uh, tweets, Truman. Are you ready with the tweets? Or do you need me to read them off? Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, you should probably read them off. I had them, okay. I lost them. Okay. Read the rage. Okay, let me f- make sure I get to the rage. But there we go. Okay. First, uh, Joe Porcelli at Joe Porcelli 3. Good news. Shep says the goals are going to start coming from Barlow. Huh. I think that was before the goal actually came from Barlow. <laughs> yep, it was. Uh, Ed Ritter at Red Ritter 60. Starting to question if Struber knows what he's doing here. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, Bobby H at Bobby first since 81. This franchise in, is in real trouble. I mean, Chivas USA trouble. Not sure if I agree with that, but eh. I mean, well, uh, they won't cease to exist that, that much. I will say. Yeah. They're not going to just cease to stick. So, um, let's see. Let's get skip the rest of the conversation. Uh, 91 minute at 91 Minuto. New York Rebels, incompetence from the very top down to players and academies. First team a disaster. RBNY too horrible. Week after week, same show, expecting different results. Owners, management might have destroyed our club. Half a roster is not good enough for MLS. Struber classless. End miser- or endless misery for the fans. Struber clueless. Uh, Rochesco at Rochesco on Twitter. Somewhere in the deepest, darkest Austria, Samuel Teta is telling a bartender, quote, I told you I wasn't the problem. <laughs> also, Kate, was Caden Clark's appendix the source of all his power? Certainly seems that way. Yeah. Right? His mojo was in it. Um, <clears throat> Steven Santos at Creepy Taxi. Can I drown in that shitty deep dish casserole already and end the season? By that, he means what Chicago considers pizza. Yep. There you go. And the rest of the tweets have to do with the wings I was eating because <laughs> I, fig- <laughs> I figured the wings way. were going to be more enjoyable than the game, and fuck was I right. Yeah. Well, we know tr- we know uh, Jay's like in the game. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> hey, those homemade buffalo wings are awesome. All right, so let's get into this one. Uh, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to do likes first because I feel like we just need to have the rant session at the end and not try to come off of that into positivity. So you guys know my like. It's the chicken wings I made for dinner that night. Thankfully, it, I well, sort of thankfully, I timed them to come out perfectly with the game. Uh, unfortunately, 
the Red Bulls sucked. So, yeah. um, so Pat, you're up. What did you like about this one? Uh, jeez. Oh, um, I guess you know honestly, I, I I'm just gonna get throw out a like to John Tolkien. Um, I mean, I think he was the only player on that field the other night who looked like he had anything going for him. Um, you know, I know Barlow scored a goal, but it was in garbage time, so it's not a real goal. Um, so, you know, he was kind of a little engine that could. Uh, hopefully, he's someone who has a bright future here. We'll see. Uh, but, you know, uh, I, I guess Tolkien is really the only thing I could take away. What I liked about this game is that after eight minutes, you knew it was over. <laughs> and there was not a chance in fucking hell they were going to come back to get any kind of points. So I was able to take my phone that I was watching the game on, and I was able to just put it right down here by the couch and just kind of leave it on and mostly ignore the rest of the game, occasionally glancing over to see if anything was going on because you knew with this team, no fucking way in hell, <laughs> they were coming back. It's sad to come off that 0-0 tie against Cincinnati and then do this. Just. All right, dislikes. Truman, you can go first. What do you dislike about this one? What I didn't like about this game is that after eight minutes, you knew the game was fucking over, and I had to put my phone down and occasionally glance at it because you knew there was no chance in hell they were coming back in this game. I don't care about garbage goal. That meant absolutely nothing. It's another fucking abysmal performance by the team, losing to a really, really, really shitty team in Chicago. A fucking whatever it was, two minutes into the game, you're like, fuck you. Eight minutes, fuck you again. Boom, I'm done. You suck. And you know me. I'm usually the most positive guy on this show, correct? Yeah. Right? I, yeah. right? I try to keep it positive. There's nothing fucking positive about this team right now. Nothing. I will delve into a little afterthought, uh, but you guys go ahead. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! Um, I just like would be that because I am on a podcast that I don't get paid for, uh, I know Shocker Patreon fans, I'm pretty sure that just goes to buying Jay a 30-pack of Bush Light every month. So you but, say that as I was about to start pulling the money down and splitting it out, I had to pay for the hosting fees first. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so uh, because I do this podcast, I am obligated to watch this team. So <laughs> that's, that is my dislike. <laughs> I, I have to watch this bullshit so I can talk about it on this show. And, uh, yeah, they're just in a fucking abysmal watch. I mean, who knew they could get worse? I mean, we, we fired Chris Armas for less. I mean, that's what's amazing here. Uh, you know, it, it's like he was bad because he was at the bottom of the, you know, playoff table. And now we're no fucking in the, in the pandemic playoffs. here. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just woof. This team is a uh, uh, dumpster fire. It's fucking embarrassing! Uh, I don't know if there's one thing I can dislike about this game. Uh, this is more of a question. Was Christian Caceres that bad during the beginning of this game compared to everybody else? Because I don't understand why he was the one that come off. Uh, according to Struber, it was fitness, and if it was fitness, then shame on you for putting him out there to begin with. Um, you know, I've been a bit easy on Struber, I admit that, because I've seen improvements in certain players, but, you know, I, yeah, they're showing you, there's some, some things popping up now, I'm beginning to question the man. Um, I don't know, does Roy can't have an opinion? I, I No? So it's like you really fail. Okay. You're a shit manager. There you go. All right. Yeah wait for that <laughs> so I mean that's what I'll say about that but I, I'm sure you have more dislike to go into that yeah I mean if you're gonna take a guy off that early on and that bad a performance fuck it go full tilt and just use all five of your subs right then and there why not right mm -hmm. if the team's playing that poorly 
fuck the rest of the game. Send a fucking message that it's not worth not working and you're upset. Taking Caceres off for quote fitness doesn't do anything. And clearly that was not a fitness issue because of how pissed off he was when he came off the field. Mm-hmm. And he ran off the field. Yeah. I like I think he actually went to the far touch line instead of coming over to the bench. Like he mm-hmm. intentionally got off as quickly as possible. That's how pissed he was. Mm-hmm. And Schubert didn't even give him a high five. If it's a fitness thing, usually you're consoling the guy at some point. Like, clearly, that was not fitness, and Struber's just trying to play the PR game. But, my God, if the team's going to play that badly, and you're going to send a fucking message, then just send the fucking message. Don't take Caceres off. Take off fucking Fabio and uh, Kamala. <laughs> right? We need to fucking score goals, and that wasn't happening. Take off the two guys who are not scoring the fucking goals. Don't wait till the 70th minute to take one of them off. I feel like shit. <laughs> I mean, I was home, right? It's not like I, it's not like I was going anywhere that night, but Jesus, like if if people are either paying to go to the games at Red Bull Arena or they're take they're taking time out of their day to sit there and watch the game. <laughs> They deserve fucking better than this. Right, I'm Thank not you. saying they have to win every game, but they Thank deserve some us. fucking effort. Thank you for those who, who pay, those of us who pay to go to every fucking game at Red Bull Arena. Ugh. Or even those that travel to Chicago. I'm sure some of the supporters went to Chicago for this game. There were. Yeah, there was a few. Right? They At minimum, they deserve the, the fucking effort from the players, and they're not getting it. And the, funny thing, and, the, and the funny thing is, I don't even blame um, Cornell for those goals. He got come no. out to drive both of those. No, yeah, no. He, he, he didn't stand a chance. Mm-hmm. Like, where the fuck did this defense go all of a sudden? Like, yeah, I understand oh. they have injuries, but... I was going to say, it's on injured reserve right now. That's where it is. Yeah, but even on injured reserve, like, we haven't been this bad. Like, I think the last thing we were this bad was the game away at New England. The problem is that they were that bad for eight minutes, and that was enough. Mm-hmm. And they were that bad for eight minutes against a shit team on top of that. that a shit team should counteract that fact that you're that, not doing that well. I mean, you, got, you should think they should have had three goals if it wasn't for uh, the one uh, Chicago striker just completely whiffing on a one-timer. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Any afterthoughts? Plenty. I got plenty. Oh, yeah. uh, so I want to talk about this. Uh, a long time ago, uh, guest of the show, Corey Jameson, and I were chatting on the Twitter. And, you know, we both brought up one of the biggest problems with this team right now is that if you took the team and you're like, hey, listen, we're going with the youth movement. Give the, ti- give the team time to grow. They're going to grow up. They're going to play together. I think we'd all say Great. All right. I, I I can take a few years of the team not making the play struggling, but you're going to build to something, right? But that's not what this team is. And I'm, it's really not what Major League Soccer is either. The mm-hmm. problem is they, the Red Bulls have a great academy. They get these great players, and then they're fucking gone in a year, and they don't do anything to plug in these holes. So when this team was successful and going to the playoffs, I mean, they weren't winning championships, but when they're going to the playoffs every year, you had that occasional Tyler Adams, these other really good young players that were popping into the lineup, but they still had parts. You had mm-hmm. your Sashas, your Daxes, or whatever. You know, you had these guys that were filling the rest of the team, BWP, of course. So you had all of that together. That's a playoff team in Major League Soccer. The way this team is built, as we know, now we know we have injuries in the center back, but it's not it, this team will never be composed to be a playoff team the way it's constructed right now. It just can't be because they're not addressing the biggest issues, and that is, again, right down the middle of that field. Mm-hmm. A, a creative central attacking midfielder, the center backs obviously is a fucking mess right now. <laughs> there is nothing to support this team and be able to replace these young guys who go who go off to Europe and 
go do bigger and better things and get on the national team. I mean, there's nothing there. There's it's just fucking it's a bunch of kids playing a bunch <laughs> of kids. And it, it's not going to get better because if Caden Clark has a fucking great rest of the season, well, he's gone. So who gives a shit? He's fucking gone. And then who replaces him? Probably nobody. Red Bull 2 guy. No one's uh-huh. fucking heard of. The kid from Uganda. Yeah, because we know it's not going to be a, a fucking second, a third division guy from Europe. That's what they're doing. And it's it's fucking bad. And, and it, it's it's fucking embarrassing, of course. And it could just drive you crazy. It just drives you fucking crazy the way this team is composed right now. Yeah, I mean... Absolutely. I mean, you, you record a lot of the points I made last week. Um, you know, and it's it's Kamala and I understand Kamala and uh, Fabio aren't getting the greatest of uh, service, but uh, they're just a disaster of a striker tandem. I mean, they 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 have no chemistry whatsoever. You're kind of amazed that they don't have any chemistry at this point. Uh, and if they don't have chemistry, guess what? Then you you drop the two striker system. You know. If like you can't make it work, you you drop that system. You go back to one. You put people on the wings. But then again, we also know this team has neglected the wings for like five, six years. Yep. I mean, it, it's just you just traded one of the guys who actually could sort of play wing uh, in Florian below. You know, it, it's it's just an embarrassment. It's an this team is embarrassing. I do agree with that one Twitter uh, person who said that we're 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 going full Shivas right now. We really are. We're feeding. Uh, we're feeding Europe. That's what we are. We're like much like they fed uh, Guadalajara. You know, it, it's just it's embarrassing. And on top of that, I was kind of annoyed. I mean, I was watching. A com- I just saw a commercial saying that Red Bull Brazil or whatever they were is going to uh, play for in the Copa Libertadores or Sundo America. I was like, oh wow, okay. And I look them up, and sure enough, they're one of the top clubs in Brazil. So it's like. We're the one Red Bull club that they just don't give a fuck about. And, and it's and it's just it's it's embarrassing. And which which makes no sense because they're in the biggest fucking city on the planet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean I know I know we play in Harrison, but they still represent the largest metropolitan area in the world, the most influ- influential city on the planet. It's mm-hmm. New York. This should be the team you now I know Europe's different, probably, you know, Leipzig's your number one team. It's a German team. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, number two should be a team that plays in fucking the New York City metropolitan area. Yeah. With mm-hmm. that arena. And mm-hmm. the, the way you could definitely build. There's no reason why they can't build an amazing fan base by building a great team. Because the fans like us are fucking sick and tired of this shit. And that's mm-hmm. why there's not – that's why the attendance is low. The attendance is not low because of getting to the stadium. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Traffic issues. It is not that. No matter who fucking tries to tell you that's the reason, it's not it. If this team was putting out a great fucking winning product, mm-hmm. people will be there. And there's no reason the fucking head, heads in fucking Red Bull can't do it. There's mm-hmm. no reason they can't put players onto this fucking team mm-hmm. with, with DP money mm-hmm. and, and build a great fucking contending team and then have the youth kids, kids come up, play great. Send them to Europe and, and continue that going. No reason. Well, There's no fucking reason. Yeah. Well, the worst thing about what you just said about DP money is that they do have two designated players on this team, and they both suck. That ain't <laughs> DP money, man. I mean, Patrick Clamal and Drew Yearwood are both terrible. Yep, that is not. That ain't spending DP money. Yeah. I mean, no, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's they're out. It's like gonna be like, oh no, we got you two DPS. What are you talking about? We just haven't found the right third one. Actually, Kaku was the third one. He should still be on this team. Actually, one of them was a young DP, not even a regular DP. So, which is, was in two out of four. Which, which is fine. Get a young DP, but get get one that like has at least somewhat of a track record. I mean, it's been done. You know. But I mean, that that means realistically, we're using two out of four DP slots. Either way, fucking embarrassing. <laughs> Well, I wasn't even calling for it. It actually just came out of my mouth. <laughs> and I know, hey, I know, we're no. not, we're not like Orlando and Miami or LA. You know, we're not a twenty four seven, three sixty five warm climate team. I, I get that. Where, where the Chicharitos want to go and the Iguines want to go, like those guys 
all want to go where it's going to be warm, live in a warm climate, whatever. We can't get a couple great German players over here? I know, The right? Germans who love the cold weather? We had Thierry Henry! Yeah! <laughs> We had the, one of the fucking greatest players of all time on I mean, this team. I, I that man did was, love New York City, by the way. Yeah, I mean, I get it was a bit on the back end of his career, but we had Thierry fucking Henry. Yeah. I mean, give me a and break. And Tim Cahill. We, did have, we had Tim Cahill. Tim Cahill. Big fucking player. Yeah. As much as he sucked Rafa Marquez, because he didn't, his career wasn't over when he left New York. He went to Mexico he and had a few good years. He was great everywhere but here. <laughs> right. And listen... When fucking Red Bull Honda is the number two team in Formula One year in and year out, and the only reason they're losing, by the way, is that Team Mercedes is totally cheating and running them off the road every race. Because believe me, (laughs) I'm watching. Max Verstappen completely got screwed in the last race. I'm just saying. But anyway, to prove the point, when they can invest that much money into a racing team, you can't throw that money our way, too. I mean, at this point, sell the fucking team. I mean, this is how you're going to treat it. Sell the fucking team. I mean, for the one or two kids that you can eventually ship off to Europe every couple of years, just sell the team. You, you don't get it. It must be losing money for you. That's why you're not investing. What's the point of keeping it? I was I was going to say the the only difference between Red Bull New York and everything else they do is. I think literally the fact that it's MLS because MLS just has these weird fucking roster rules and profit sharing. And I bet you, if we didn't have those rules, we would see a lot more money pumped into this team. I, I think you're probably right there too. I think that was independent ownership. I, I think you're probably right. Um, but I think the problem too, is that we've already seen them invest in the team. Yeah. And we've what, seen them because there. we didn't win championships. They said, fuck it. We give up, you know, now, the other thing, too, is what, what really drives me crazy about ownership is that on the local level, when you're looking at the, the, the people who own the franchise, the guys who operate the day-in-day operations of the Red Bulls, they do a pretty fucking great job. By, I think by the fans, I think they do a good job. They created the, the, you know, the standing section, which is awesome. They provide transportation to a shit ton of the local away games, Philly and uh, uh, New England, and they've done Columbus trips. You know, on that level, they do a lot, which is I I will always appreciate about this organization. Fucking 14 buses to D.C., the first game they ever owned the team. They built an amazing stadium, which I love. You know, Red Bull Arena, I still think is probably top five stadiums in MLS because there's some really awesome stadiums. Um, number one in and, my heart, of course. And and Red Bull Arena got bought or built during the era where all the Major League Soccer stadiums were doubled up as concert venues. They had that weird end of the yeah. stadium that yeah. just disappeared. It, it, so they made you know a legit it soccer stadium. It's the, it's the Camden Yards. Yeah. It's the Camden Yards. It and now back. we're the fucking Orioles. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> but it, so that's the thing that drives you nuts is that I, I know we harp on like the local owners or whatever, but they do – they do a lot, I think, for the fans. The problem is the head brass over in Europe ain't doing shit to help us out. Take, take, take. No give, give, give. Oh, I'm sorry. They give us their fucking jabroni players. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're Salzburg cast offs. Yeah. So two, two things. I remember when I went to Kansas City for that Open Cup final a few years ago, the team sprung for the buses for us to go from Kansas City, Missouri to Kansas City, Kansas for the game. Ooh. And that was not – a short drive, so um, buses buses to the draft. They do the yep. you know they would do the buses to the draft every year, which was fucking awesome. They don't they don't have to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. When we're talking trips to Baltimore and Philly, and the other thing that we're talking about this is kind of occurred to me. This drop off in spending for us coincided with Leipzig making the Bundesliga. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So I think it's very clear, like, oh, when we're in the lower levels of Germany, we don't need as much money, so we'll put it towards New York. Right? Build up the stuff there to feed Leipzig, obviously. And then once we start having to spend money in the Bundesliga, it's like, oh, well, no, now we're done with New York. I'm not saying Bundesliga is just a Champions League. Right, but um, my point is, um, once, if it wasn't, I think it's kind of, like I said before, was the fact that 
MLS has this weird structure with profit sharing and all that stuff. And I know there's profit sharing in Europe, but it's not to the same degree it is here. But between the non-independent ownership and the fact that Red Bull Global has a budget and they just said, well, this money needs to go down to Leipzig, we got fucked over completely. All right. And honestly, I think like Jesse Marsh, I think, did a great job with him and Curtis that first year, did a great job building a roster inside the MLS roster rules because I think we were actually one of the cheapest rosters that year too, right? So it's proven that you can still do a good job. I mean, hell, MLS basically gives everybody $5 million of free money every year. There's no reason you can't spend it wisely. It's just, I, for whatever reason, we've... And I still don't know how Dennis Hamlet still has a job, honestly, but I don't know how we're not spending this money wisely well, at this point. It's Kevin Thule now running the show, right? Yeah. Right, but why is Hamlet still around? I uh, mean, because he, he's the but he's the one for, that was in charge personnel wise when Armis's teams went pfft, down right. to shitter. But, how did how did Glenn Sather keep a job with the Rangers for so long? It was because Kevin James Dolan, Dolan yeah. didn't James. give a shit because they weren't the Knicks. <laughs> Much well, like Red Bull doesn't give a shit because we're not Leipzig. Well, let's hope then uh, Dennis Hamlet will do much like say there and in year seven turn this thing around. <laughs> I don't know. It's and I'm sure like if I don't know if if we were to somehow magically turn this around towards the end of the year, we probably won't be complaining this much. But it's just it's frustrating. Shep said it on the, on the the FC Cincinnati game. It's great if you want to build, but results matter, and we are past the point of results needing to matter. Or I'm sorry, we're past the point of being okay with uh, the learning curve. This is now the point of the season where you need to win games that you realistically can, and that includes Cincinnati at home, and it includes Chicago on the road. And includes holding a fucking goal lead in the final minutes of a game against, I know, the best team in MLS. Yes. But you can't hold a fucking goal lead. goal lead with eight minutes yeah. to go. Not yeah. even hold on to a draw. Yeah. Let's and, face it. Some of these young guys they brought in aren't playing. Frankie Amaya. I mean, I, I brought up last week. What's he, what are you doing? You're doing nothing. Yeah, you're doing nothing. And he's on the last year of a contract, so what's going to happen? He's going to walk away on a free? Yeah, like, yeah he's yeah. going to walk away on a free after we paid seven figures for him. I mean, at least it was $7 million of funny money, but still, come on. like You're, you're going to finally use the money on a person and not even... I, this is what I'm getting about Strubery. He He must be a very... If you're in my... If you're not in my doghouse, you're going to play kind of coach because where the fuck has Royer been? Finally, Royer hasn't even been on the bench. I mean, and apparently when um, Kangelo Singh Shep been asking Struber about that, he just kind of sidesteps the question and goes on some other tangent. So clearly, Royer's not around anymore. I mean, I will say this. I mean, you know, Rebel Global is very fucking lucky the New York media does not give a flying fuck about this team. There's one. They're the new Will Ponds right now. I mean, if if you just want to elevate MLS for a second to the next year, they're the new Will Ponds of this town. And if New York media gave a shit, they would be eviscerating them. They would not let Schuber, they'd be running him into the ground. I mean, there's a part of me that's even like, hey, you know what? I go to home games. I'm sure they have press passes to give. The only problem is I'm lazy. But, I mean, I just kind of want to go to like, be like, oh, so uh, you're trash. Explain. Yeah, because I mean, someone needs to hold these guys' feet to the fire. I mean, I listen to, um, you know, the the MLS soccer uh, podcast, Extra Time, and I do kind of like message those guys. And if any of you listen to the show, hopefully Matt Doyle, our boy, does listen to the show. I mean, I, I understand why you don't talk Red Bull, but I, I, because they're trash. But I would like you to start so at least somebody is ho- holding in the public eye is holding this team accountable. So that's the problem. Nobody is. I mean, we can only do so much. Seeing red can only do so much. Once a metro can only do so much. But it's you know it, it, it's the main media that un- unfortunately that needs to hold these guys accountable, and they just don't cover this team. It's fucking embarrassing. 
<laughs> Coach has got it so right. All right. You ready to move on? Yes. Might as well. Okay. Truman's hot. <laughs> Literally and figuratively <laughs> hot right now. Ah, uh, man, I wish I had the Zoolander quote. All right. Uh, prediction standings. We all got a point. So Trim is still in first with 11. I have eight. Pat has six. We have two games to preview. First one, uh, away to Montreal, Saturday the 14th, 8 p.m. MSG and ESPN+. Plus. Trim, what do you think is going to happen at Montreal? In uh, Canada, by the way. We're actually going to Canada this time. Well, Mark Fishkin pointed out that uh, we haven't won a game there since 2012. So that's good sign number one. Uh, by the way, if you guys didn't notice from the first, when did we start recording? Half hour ago? Like uh, this team sucks. <laughs> and we can't beat shitty teams on the road. So that being said, 2 nothing loss? Fuck it. Why not, right? 2 nothing loss. They blow. There's There's nothing good to feel about this team right now. In order, in in honor of Montreal's former coach and ex Red Bull player Thierry Henry, are you going four one loss? <laughs> I am going son of I a am bitch. I'm going to reverse Henry, the four one loss. You know, just popped in my head before you said it too, and I should have <laughs> done it. It was in there just like milliseconds before you said it. You said it. I'm like motherfucker. I should have done it. Because it's a realistic scoreline at this point. <laughs> and that's the sad thing. It really is realistic. Yep, it's very realistic. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we suck in Montreal. We suck in general. Uh, I don't even remember the last time we scored three goals in a game this year. I don't even know if we've done it this year, scoring three goals in a game. You don't have to look it up. We did. No, I'm not. I, I'm not. I haven't looked up. You know we haven't. Uh, strikers Wait. have scored, like, what? Well, I guess Tom Bell is a striker. Uh, six, seven goals. Combined this year, we haven't. <laughs> uh, question: I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure own goal is in the top five somewhere. Uh, so yeah, I it just pain, pain, pain on Saturday, <laughs> and just more uh, chances to use the soundboard. That's what it's going to be. There you go. We um, we got another episode of Ted Lasso. Hopefully, uh, you know where Kent goes off this week. <laughs> I wonder if I should save that for Sunday. Just so I had to pick me up afterwards. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, I only watched one episode lot so far. I know there's two up, right? Yeah, so everyone comes out at midnight. Fuck. All right, I know what I'm doing tomorrow. Mm. By the way, quick quick detour, another good Apple Plus TV show, If you're especially if you're into musicals, Schmigadoon. Schmigadoon is good, yep. Yep. I put a lot of their shit on my playlist for when I'm listening at work. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, All right. Pat. Pat. My turn. Uh, yeah, the team is trash. And in honor of the game I went to in 2019, 3 nothing loss. Too bad I won't be in Montreal to enjoy the city this time. That'd make it palpable. Yeah. I'll be in the Catskill, so that's kind of good. But. Yeah, I was good. actually in Montreal back when I was in high school. Well, and... I was in there in 2019, Jay. And I was going to say it was kind of funny being a high school student with the on a band trip, where the pretty much the whole group of kids gets uh, propositioned by a hooker on a street corner. So yeah, that, that place uh, has very legal prostitution. I did not partake. I just saw the places. <laughs> yeah. All right, the second game uh, coming up is on Wednesday, August eighteenth, eight p.m. Uh, Columbus at home. Oh, boy, another good one. Uh, Truman, what are your predictions <laughs> for this game? Well, I'm going to I'm gonna show you guys something right here. Um, I'm just going to bring it up on my phone. Give me one second. This is Columbus's current record, win, losses, and draws. And I think it's going to spell how this game's going to go. Hopefully you guys can see it. Let me bring it up. Oh, it might be backwards. So there you go. You six, six, down. six. <laughs> All right, which probably – I mean, they'll obviously change by the time we play them, but I'm a little nervous because now the devil has showed up. All right, the devil is coming to take the soul from this team at Red Bull Arena leading into their next home game, which I will be in attendance, everybody. I'll be at that 
the other game on the weekend. But I, I think really Satan himself is going to come out of the ground in a yellow jersey and just suck Struber's life right away from him, bring it back to hell, and we lose that game. Two to one because stupid Tom Barlow is going to score in the hundred and seventh minute because we're going to have that much stoppage time for because the devil showed up and sucked the soul and there was a whole cops there's like a whole fucking scene going on <laughs> so they had to let, yeah had like seventeen minutes of stoppage time and that's when Barlow would score. I'm behind the beast. You know who is on Columbus? Brian McBride. Sure, but that's not what I'm talking about. Dilly Duca. Sure. No, I'm talking Giassi Zardis. Oh, American Hero Giassi Zardis. Yeah, American <laughs> Hero Giassi Zardis. That, that is the devil in the yellow jersey. <laughs> and by the way, when, when they named the Cincinnati-Columbus um, rivalry Hell is Real, I didn't mean they literally meant Hell is Real. But, <laughs> it clearly no. is right now. Yep. Uh oh boy, yeah, it's gonna be a rough one. Um, I if we get a goal, it's gonna be garbage time. Sure, Tom Barlow can do it because why not get him two garbage goals in in two weeks when he hasn't scored in a fucking year? Um, but I am gonna go was a 3-1 loss against Columbus. Uh, I think at this point going forward, I am going to just assume they're losing until they prove me wrong, which may not be for a while. But this, that's my game plan. I'm just going to bet. I'm going to keep betting on the losses. So. Uh, my first prediction is that uh, Fabio will throw his arms up like in a what the hell kind of like motion at least four times after he fucks <laughs> up a shot. Um, so that's the thing. Uh, I'm gonna go with three one loss as well. I think that I think that like you know Tom Edwards by accident will score with his dick. It'll just bounce <laughs> off and go right in the goal. And he'd be like, oh cool, I got a dick goal, and that, that's how we get our goal. It's not even gonna be intentional. We're gonna and it, we're gonna get a goal. We might have gotten a second one. I do predict Tom Barlow will save another one against us uh, in this game. So, yeah. And I'll be at this game. Because <laughs> I have season tickets and I'm a moron. So, yeah. It's going to be fun. So, Tom Edwards is going to score Felipe is what you're saying? Yeah. Well, Felipe was a face goal, if I think. If I'm it was correct. a face? Okay. I thought it was. It was a face, yeah. I, I believe it was uh, Cahill scored one with his dick. Somebody scored it. That's all I remember. Yeah. I thought it was Felipe. Cahill or Louis and Dulo score with the dick. I forget which one, but yeah, the only goal we're getting is a dick goal. Oof. All right. Let's move on. New York Red Bulls 2. Oh, look at that. They lost because they just can't. This organization does nothing but lose recently. Yeah, nice things. 3 2 loss uh, versus the Charlotte Independence. The next match is Saturday, August 14th versus San Antonio. They are still number seven in the conference, uh, 13 points. I think there were like 10, 11 points at the playoffs or something like that. I don't even know how many games they have left, but they're probably not making it because fuck this organization at this point. Yeah. But, by the way, one of our former uh, academy players is the kicker for Rutgers football because, I mean, this whole thing, like, like yeah, we're getting the academy ready to bring up players to so eventually send the life. Apparently not. We're sending them to college fucking football, <laughs> which I'm okay with. I'm a Rutgers football fan, and he's pretty good, so. All right, uh, Gotham FC lost their last match one nothing to the North Carolina Courage. Uh, that drops them to number three in the NWSL. Uh, they are have 20 points, eight off of Portland Thorns, who are the league leaders. The next match is Sunday, August 15th, against Racing Louisville at 5 p.m. It will probably be a team winning in Red Bull Arena because we need that. That's not the Red Bulls. So, If you don't follow them on Instagram, you should. Go watch their video of how they celebrated the Olympics. Uh, it's super hilarious. Uh, I won't give anything away, but there was hilarious awards and uniforms being made, and you should go watch it because it's super funny. That might make you smile, despite all this misery that we deal with. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, so it is time for the dumping ground. I'm the trash man. That's actually Struber. That's actually not Danny DeVito. <laughs> what idiot put you in charge? You did. <laughs> All right, so the big news, uh, Messi, unfortunately, did not sign with the Red Bulls. I couldn't believe it. Shot. Ah. <laughs> I know. Uh, we, got beat out. In on him. we got beat out by $1 by PSG. Ah. <laughs> Damn Frenchies. Yeah, so kind of surprising. I thought most of what I saw was Man City being the, the – well, let me phrase it. Before he was no longer a Barcelona player – Everything I read saw said Man City was going to be the team going to next. A different it was oil money, just the wrong oil money. So PSG. I and, I had the I had the inside scoop actually on this because as soon as he got released, I asked my good friend uh, Fernando, who works in the recon department at the car dealership I work with. So I said, Fernando, where is he going? And he looked at me and he said, PSG. He's going to PSG. That's it. So I knew, I knew that was it. I didn't even, I don't question Fernando. He knows all about the football and he was right. I, I think you need to get Fernando's help in predicting them. I will. We totally missed that prediction on our show last week. That's for sure. I yeah. gave Fernando a gift because I'm good friends with this man, the gift of a Red Bulls t-shirt. And now I feel like I just, <laughs> I gave him like the worst thing on the planet. Uh, you know, maybe if he, I if pray he never follows that team. Yeah, if he, you know, if his heat bill runs out at some point, uh, gets shut off in the winter, he can burn it for warmth. That's true. That is very true. A multi-purpose gift. There you go. <laughs> All right. The next thing I see on here is not mine, so I don't know who put it on there. Yeah, uh, it's just simply that uh, Josh Sargent, uh, potentially your starting striker for the U.S. national team, has gone to Norwich, who recently promoted side to the Premier League. Uh, interesting move, I would say. Um I don't know if it's a better move. I, I kind of feel like strikers should play in leagues where they can score shit in the goals and just get confidence up, and I'm not sure he's going to do it at Norwich, but, hey, let's see what happens. It could be a fun thing to watch. But the Canaries have sweet fucking uniforms, man. Yeah. And watch, this is, this is the year Josh Hart is going to lead the Premier League in scoring and, and lead Norwich to the title. Yeah. Oh, just man. because you said that. The new Leicester. We're about to do for New Leicester, so. <laughs> All right, is that it for the dumping ground? Yep. All right, yep. so that, take, that takes us now to Pat's betting corner. All right, this week, here's what I'm going with. I'm going with the resurgent Quakes over Vancouver, because uh, Vancouver's trash and Quakes are home. Why not? Montreal over us, because why wouldn't I? And uh, New York City FC over Miami because Miami's also trash. So uh, that was my three team parlay for the week. Did you win last week? Nah, I never won. Okay. All right. Time for our last segment Truman's Terrible Team of the Week. That's terrible. I want to say us, but that's easy. That's cheating. Uh, not, not too many blowouts, <laughs> except. At Children's Mercy Park, where Kansas City got absolutely shellacked by Lyon in the ever popular Leagues Cup, six to one at home, six to one, yeah. six to one at home. They lost in Kansas City, Kansas. So there you go. Yeah, I read. I read that a uh, few Vermees pretty much put a scrub line out. Out. So and it's just like, okay, you're playing this tournament that's putting eyes on your league against another league that you want to be competing with and want to be besting, and that's what you do. And he said, we need to rest and rest the guys before the game. Rest them the game before. Don't blow this game. But, yeah, they went ahead and did that. It's almost but, like a, a, a meaningless tournament for MLS teams isn't treated with meaning. I mean, yeah, go okay. figure. But uh, I almost thought maybe you would go to Barcelona for letting uh, Messi go, but, yeah. Even though it's not entirely their fault. It sounds like if they wanted to keep Messi, they would have had to pretty much sign the Red Bulls and get rid of everybody else. <laughs> and apparently it's not just Barcelona. It's a bunch of teams in La Liga that are facing this issue with their uh, new salary cap restrictions. Yeah, apparently, yeah, there's a salary cap now. Ooh. Europe. <clears throat> All 
All right. Is that it? Are we done? Yeah. I'm done. All right, let's wrap this one up. Patreon.com slash variable rant one buck a month is all you need for exclusive content such as <clears throat> monthly wrap ups and live post game stuff we do. Maybe since we'll have two guys at the same game for the first time in over a year, we can get a little something something. Uh, making us do work. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be there, so. Yeah. All right. Uh, if you want to email us during the week, redbullrant at gmail.com. If you want to call us, 973 973- Three four eight five three two nine, Facebook dot com slash Red Bull Rant on Twitter at Red Bull Rant for the show at Doctor Stooge myself at the Truman for Truman. Subscribe to our show via iTunes, Stitcher Radio, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you can find a podcast. Last words before we get out of here. I would laugh and say it's win, um, <laughs> but that's hilarious. So I'm gonna direct this, I guess, towards the Mets this weekend. Maybe they can get their shit together and win. Uh, I'm just going to say all American European players have a great weekend. Uh, so give me something to watch. Oh, yeah. Other soccer starts this weekend. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. All right. So for Pat Truman and myself, this has been episode 372 of the Red Bull Rant. Thank you guys for tuning in. Just please don't fuck this up, Red Bulls. Oh, peace, love, and dope. Now get the hell out of here!